need you, Beaver Dam. We need you. We need you to stand up. We need you, Beaver Dam. We need you to get loud. We need you to wear your orange and black and wear proud. We need you, Beaver Dam. We need you. Welcome back to another edition of the Beaver Sports Show. I'm your host, as always, Audrey Wilts, and alongside me, co-hosting. I'm Alex Crawford. How are you doing tonight? You know, I'm a little bit stressed out. I have a big midterm tomorrow, but I'm also very focused right now, Audrey. Lots of focus. Super focused, a little stressed, but let's put the stress and schoolwork aside and let's talk sports. How hey, about that? You don't have to tell me twice. All right, awesome. After the loss, um, not this past weekend, but the weekend before, um, the Beavers were looking to redeem themselves for Dad's weekend against ASU. I think you got some highlights from that, yeah? Yeah, let's roll the tape. Croft's clips. It was Dad's weekend in Fort Dallas, and Oregon State was looking to bounce back from their first loss of the season, taking on the Arizona State Sun Devils at home. Third play of the game, Cody Baz is in shotgun. He's looking to pass, but he forgets something. The ball slips out of his hands. Arizona State scoops it up to go up 7-0 very, very early. Not the way you want to start the game if you're Oregon State. Just a few plays later, Cameron Marshall runs the ball up the gut. Sun Devils are up 14-3 with 8.44 left to go in the first. Oregon State in a big hole early on, but then Teron Ward takes the kickoff and there hasn't been a Beaver kickoff return this long all season. Teron Ward takes it all the way down almost to the 50-yard line. Beaver's offense has the spark they need to get the ball rolling. Cody Baz looking to pass, passes that one to Marcus Wheaton, and he does the rest of the work, outrunning the rest of the Sun Devils secondary into the end zone. There's a reason why he's one of the fastest wide receivers in the Pac-12. Just a little bit later on, Cody Baz is going to be under center, looking to hand the ball off to a guy whose name we haven't said too much this season. It's Teron Ward. Teron Ward rushes up the gut. Sun Devils can't bring him down. The little bowling ball from De La Salle High School is going to take that 53 yards into the end zone, cut the Sun Devils lead to three. And we haven't seen a run like that since the quiz Rogers was wearing orange and black for the Beavers. Look at that run. No one could touch it. Just a little bit later on in the game, Oregon State looking to score again. They need to bring it back. And then Cody Vaz is going to dump that one off to Connor Hamlet. Connor Hamlet, big dude, 6'7". No one can bring him down. If the field was 10 yards wider, that would have been a touchdown. A little bit later on, Vaz is hit as he throws, looking to bounce back from a shaky start. But look at Brandon Cooks. Where was the Sun Devils secondary? I'll tell you where. They weren't there. Why do you leave one of the best wide receivers in the nation wide open like that? Brandon Cooks said it's the most wide open he's ever been in his whole career, and he makes him pay. With that score, Oregon State would go up 36-19 and they wouldn't look back. That was 10-54 left in the fourth and your final at Oregon State would be 36-26 Beavers. Beavers moved to 7-1 on the season, 5-1 in conference. Thanks for that, Alex. This week's player of the game was a surprise, to say the least. To Ron Ward, who replaced Storm Woods that was out this week with a knee injury, racked up 146 yards with one touchdown on 19 carries. What a great game for Teron Ward. Here's Emily Yetter with the player of the game in this week's one-on-one. -on -one. Hey, everyone. My name is Emily Yetter, once again with the Beaver Sports Show, bringing you another player of the game. This week, I got to meet up with Teron Ward and talk about his experience in this last weekend's game against Arizona State. You had 146 yards, 19 carries, and a touchdown. Were you expecting any of this going into the game? I wouldn't say I was expecting all of that, but I was expecting to play well when my opportunity came, and I feel like I took the biggest chance of my opportunity and took all of it. So going into the game, Storm Woods was supposed to start. What was going through your head when Coach Riley was like, hey, you're going in? Uh, well, Storm, had, he hadn't practiced all week, mm -hmm. so me and Agnew knew we were going to play a little bit more. And uh, Agnew started the game. He had a couple of carries. And uh, I think like third third series, they put me in. I uh, had a good block. I had a couple of good runs. And they just kept me in. And I kept uh, doing as best as I could. So it was the second quarter when you scored your touchdown. And you guys went into halftime, tied at 19-19. Mm -hmm. What was going through you guys' head at that moment? Well, we had put ourselves in a hole in the early in the first quarter and the second quarter. And to be tied up at halftime, we were just really thankful, you know. And uh, 
Cause we could have been down, you know, 20 points, who knows. But uh, to go into halftime and start the second half off fresh, I feel like we were really uh, confident in all we can come out the second half and do what we had to do. So I know there's a lot of talk of who's going to start next game, you or Storm. Mm -hmm. What's going through your head? I know you'd probably love to start, but... Uh, it doesn't matter to me who starts. I just want to play, you know, and help the team out win. Uh, I think right now Storm's starting, and uh, mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. Just as long as I get to uh, help the team win this weekend, I'll be thankful. Mm -hmm. So you really did help your team win last weekend. Is it a pretty good feeling knowing that you were a huge part of that win? Oh, yeah. You always want to be a big part of the team victory, but once again, it, was, it just wasn't me. You know, the line played great. The, the coaches were called great plays. The defense stopped them. So it was a team victory. So how does it feel working besides, you know, running backs like Malcolm Avenue and Storm Woods? Uh, it's, it's great every day. Yeah, competition every day. Those are two great guys. Uh, we're in the film room competing. Everything's in competition with us. It doesn't matter if we're in the weight room on the field or in the film room. Uh, it's just good to be around quality backs like that and quality people. So how did it feel? 53 yards and you got a touchdown. What was going through your head at that moment? Uh, to be honest, Nothing was going through my head. It was pretty silent. I got everything blocked out, all the noise, everything. I couldn't hear anything. The only thing I could hear was my breath mm -hmm. and uh, Marcus Weeden coming come behind me. But uh, it felt good. It was my first touchdown at Rooster Stadium, so that was always nice. And to be a 50 yard, that's a big touchdown. I think it's the longest touchdown of the season so far. But, and uh, it, was a, it was just it was a good feeling to help my team out and have a big play on the game and a big play for my team. So you guys are playing Stanford this weekend. You guys are going down to California, where you're from. How does it feel being in your state and all your friends and family there? Uh, it's gonna be a good feeling. It's still a business trip, but I get to see uh, all my family, all my friends, a couple of players that I played for Stanford that I used to play against. Uh, it's gonna be a good feeling. I get to see my niece for the first time, so it'll be a, a good family affair, but also it's a business trip at the same time. There you have it, the inside scoop on Taryn Ward. Tune in next week for our Player of the Game when we play Stanford. Once again, I'm Emily Yetter with the Beaver Sports Show. Back to you. Getting away from football for a moment, we now have Jake McGrady giving us all the details on Away Sports. Hi Beaver Nation, Jake McGrady here. It was a slow week in Beaver Away Sports, but let's get into it. In its final match of the regular season, the Oregon State women's soccer team fell to Oregon 2-0. Now moving to cross country, the Oregon State's cross country team took some tough breaks at the Pac-12 championship on Saturday, battling their way to an 11th place finish at the Robinson Ranch Golf Course in California. And make sure to stay tuned for next week for an exclusive interview with former Beaver Sports Show producer, Boone Kruger. Back to you guys. Thanks, Jake. A few Beaver Sports Show reporters went to the practice field to ask a few football players some trivia questions. Here's Coy Tran, Mitch Singler, and Kyle McCoon in this week's special segment, Sports Trivia. The Hulk or the Thing? The Hulk. Baskin Robbins or Cold Stone? Cold Stone, easy. Keisha or Lady Gaga? <laughs> Keisha. Jersey Shore or Kardashians? Oh, Kardashians. Five guys are in and out. In and out, easy. Hot or cold? Hot. Iron Man or Hulk? Iron Man. BMW or Audi? Oh, man. Chocolate milk or hot chocolate? Hot chocolate. Cookies or brownies? Brownies. Hot comedy or drama? Comedy, easy. Paper or plastic? Plastic paper? iPhone or droid? iPhone, duh. South Park or Family Guy? Family Guy. Subway or Chiba Hut? Subway. Coke or Pepsi? Neither. Mac or PC? Uh, I'm a Mac guy. Avengers or Justice League? Avengers. Nike or Adidas? Duh, Nike. Superman or Batman? Superman. History or science? History or science. Brownies. Hot dog or hamburger? <laughs> hamburger. <laughs> Yoga or Pilates? Yoga. Swimming or hot tub? Uh, hot tub. Coffee or tea? Tea. Chipotle or Qdoba? Oh, Qdoba. Local boys or Hawaiian girl? Local boys. Personalities or looks? Personality. Vanilla or chocolate? <laughs> Vanilla. Rain or sunshine? <laughs> sunshine. Thanksgiving or Halloween? Oh, Halloween. Call or text? I'm calling. Euro Europe or Asia? Europe. <laughs> flat tail or, or block 15? Uh, flat tail. The Hulk or The Thing? The Hulk. What is The Thing? Baskin Robbins or Cold Stone? Cold Stone. Keisha or Lady Gaga? Woo, Keisha. Jersey Shore or Kardashians? Jersey Shore. Five guys are in and out? In and out all day. Hot or cold? <sighs> Hot or cold? Hot. Ready. Disney or DreamWorks? Disney. Comedy or drama? Comedy. 
Paper or plastic? <laughs> Paper. <laughs> iPhone or Droid? iPhone, easy. South Park or Family Guy? Family Guy. Subway or Chiba Hut? Subway. Cookie or, or Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Mac or PC? Mac. Avengers or Justice League? Avengers. Nike or Adidas? Nike. Chipotle or Kidoba? Hmm, it depends on the night. Local boys or Hawaiian grill? Local boys. Personality or looks? Personality. Vanilla or chocolate? Chocolate. Rain or sunshine? Sunshine. Thanksgiving or Halloween? Thanksgiving, easy. Call or text? Text me. I don't like to talk. Europe or Asia? Uh, Europe. Flat tail or block 15? Oh, uh, I'll go with block 15. Disney or DreamWorks? Disney or G Disney? Nike. Sup Superman or Batman? Superman, easy. History or science? Oh, history. Waking up early or staying up late? I'm an early man. Xbox or PS3? PS3, easy. Jessica Alba or Cameron Diaz? Oh, man, Jessica Alba. <laughs> pope or no pope? Uh, no pope. Eminem or 50 Cent? Oh, Eminem. Sunrise or sunset? Sunrise. Bad or good? Good. Waking up early or staying up late? Stayed up late. Xbox or PS3? PS3. Jessica Alba or Cameron Diaz? Ooh, both. Pope or no Pope? Uh, no Pope. Eminem or 50 Cent? 50 Cent. Sunrise or Sunset? I like the Sunset. That's that's a nice little little thing going on right there. Bad or good? It depends on the situation. Green. Blue. Pen or pencil? Pencil. Finding Nemo, Finding Nemo or Shrek? Finding Nemo. Wet or dry? Wet. Twitter or Facebook? <laughs> Twitter. Vampire or werewolf? Uh, vampire. <laughs> Blue or green eyes? Uh, green eyes. Pen or pencil? Pen. Finding Nemo or Shrek? Ooh, that's a tough one. Uh, I'll probably find Nemo. Wet or dry? Wet. Twitter or Facebook? Twitter. Vampire or werewolf? Werewolf. Thanks, guys. We'll be seeing you again in a moment, but first, let's go to a quick commercial break. And when we get back, we got the Beaver Roundtable with this guy, Jacob, and Jack. All right, so we're back and we switched it up a little bit. We've got Jacob down here and Jack here with Alex in the middle. How's it going? You too. Thanks for joining us again. It's going great. Excited for another round table. I've said that every time, but I just can't handle I just can't handle the excitement. I'm so excited. All right. Yeah. A little sad we missed last week, but we're back on track. We're back on track and we've got some great questions tonight. I think you guys will uh, I think you guys will switch it up. You guys have been like agreeing and then not agreeing, but I think we might get a little controversy today, which is good. So I'm a little feeling a little fiery today. All right, all right. So you guys know how it goes, obviously. For our viewers out there that are new, I ask the questions, they debate. So let's get to the first question. Uh, last show, we talked about the women's basketball team and how well they would end up at the end of the season and what their postseason was going to look like. Uh, talk to me about the men's basketball team. Where do you think they're going to end up this year? I mean, I like our team this year. Uh, we have a whole bunch of new freshmen coming in. Victor Robbins, he's going to get some playing time. Langston Morris Walker, and also Olaf Shatnar. Um, but if you look at the Pac-12 this year, it is really deep. You got UCLA, they're going to win it hands down. They got the top recruiting class of the nation last year. And also you have Arizona, they got the third recruiting class of the nation last year. Those are going to be your top two teams, but after that, it's wide open. I mean, you could look at Washington, Stanford, Oregon, or Oregon State all competing for the third place. I'm going to say we go, we get fourth. We're going to need to find that leader in Roberto Nelson. I don't know if he's going to step up or not, but hopefully he does. But I'm going to go fourth place in the Pac-12 and right on the bubble for the NCAA tournament. All right, I'm going to go with top three in conference. I think. I'm, I mean, I'm an optimist, obviously, but I, I think this year's team is, is legit. Coach Robinson's called it the best team he's ever coached. The yeah. Pac-12 obviously won't be easy this year, like you said. Last year no, was no. a down year, but this year I think they'll be a lot better. Uh, I'm going to say another thing you said. It's obviously going to be how Roberto Nelson plays, but he was magnificent in high school. He hasn't really got a chance to show what he's this been be capable of. Absolutely. 
and Coach Robinson's just been raving about Roberto Nelson's offseason. And I also want to comment on the depth of the team. Like you said, we got the freshmen. We've got just a lot of players. Either Devon Collier or Joe Burton's probably going to come off the bench, be that sixth man. So that's, that's huge. You know, two great players that could come and be the sixth man. I just think the depth of this team, the freshmen, the great out-of-conference schedule, obviously it's tough. They're opening with the 2K Sports Classic. They're going to have to play Kansas in Kansas City. So, I mean, obviously it's going to be tough out of conference, but that's the kind of thing that builds your RPI up, gets you into the NCAA tournament. So I think we finished top three. I think I think this is a great team this year. Well, I guess I'm going to be the pessimist today. Uh, you know, I just I think losing Cunningham really hurts. You know, obviously you said Nelson. I hope Nelson's that spark plug. I, I hope he's the guy that can carry us offensively. But, you know, I'm, I'm looking at – he had 91 steals last year. That's a lot of defense that's going away, not just the offense. And, you know, I, I'm really thinking that uh, – you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say ninth in the Pac-12. Wow. Uh, well, I'm looking at the teams in front of me. I told you there'd be controversy nine? today. Well, <laughs> okay, UCLA, I think UCLA has a chance for the title if Muhammad plays. Uh, Arizona also. Um, and, then, and then after them, it's Stanford, Cal, SC, Washington, Oregon, and Colorado that are all solid. I mean, that's a lot of teams we have to beat. And I'm not saying that we can't beat them on any given night, but I just think I just really have to be the pessimist. I, I really think that ninth is where we're going to place. Um, there's a lot of really good depth this year in the Pac-12, but you know maybe the Beaver Juice can roll. Maybe we can win the Pac-12 tournament. You know Colorado was predicted last last year, and look what happened to them. Well, I just I mean you brought up Roberto or excuse me Jared Cunningham being gone, and obviously he was a great great player with 91 steals, averaging a little bit over 18 points a game. But I think you take him away. I, I think this team plays better team defense. Yeah, Jared's going to play great individual defense, get the steals. But I think as a team, and I, I was talking to a bunch of players today at practice, and Ahmad Starks and uh, Coach Robinson both touched on it, that as a team, they're better defensively. And I think that's going to be something that they're not going to have to lean on Jared Cunningham in those close games. They're going to have a lot of players that can step up. And I just think that uh, they're not going to finish ninth or anywhere close to that, Jack. But we'll see. I guess that's why they I play the games. Will. It's funny to think about if Jared was still here, right? Like, what would our team look like then? You know, you talk about the dynamic of having him be such kind of his own player and taking care of the team and stuff. But, you know, you have this team dynamic that they have now. If Jared was still in the mix, you know, if his decision would have went the other way last year. I think year. it's better that he's gone. You think so? I really? think it's absolutely better that he's gone for, from a team perspective. Yeah, yeah the only person we're missing is Cunningham. Everyone else is back. Yeah, bringing back four stars is nice. But yeah, it is nice. But, still, but still ninth. Yeah. You think ninth. I, I mean, I just, I'm, I'm seeing the teams in front. I mean, we could, we could easily be above them. I, I'm, just predicting, I'm just predicting nine. I'm pessimist. That's all right, you know. Some hey, might well, call it realism. This is, this I call is what it makes pessimism. me excited for college basketball because you, you really never know. You do. You never know. Um, something else you never know, uh, college football. So Teron Ward had a great game this past game against ASU, and, oh, yeah. you know, Storm Woods is no is no laggard though. You know he's been a great running back for us this whole time. You think there's going to be some controversy of, over, over who should start now that Teron kind of shined in the light a little bit and, and stepped up and did well for us? Who I'll wants, start this one off. It? I mean okay. I don't think there should be a controversy. I think this week Teron Ward should start. Storm Woods, uh, wow. redshirt freshman, he's coming back from a hurt knee. Give him time to heal it. Start Teron Ward. He played great last week, and I'll give you that ASU doesn't have a very good rushing defense but uh obviously we're going up against stanford number one run d in the ncaa also yeah. leader in sacks per game think about this though tron ward is a is a great pass blocker he's probably the best pass blocker out of that backfield so i think that's another benefit to having him start his back there to protect cody vaz I, I think uh you know you got woods coming in off the bench you got agnew coming in mixing it up running back by committee is not a bad thing to have it's it's a lot different to be splitting time with running backs than it is with quarterbacks so i yeah. think tron ward should start for sure this week and obviously get Woods touches and get Agnew touches. Woods is young. Let him heal that knee. We don't want to risk anything long term. Teron Ward. No controversy. I think he should be the starter. All right. I see where you're coming from. What do you what do you two think? Well, I was looking at the top games. Teron Ward last game had 19 carries on 146 yards against ASU. And then he also had or Storm Woods had 29 carries on 161 yards. So Teron Ward had a break, breakout game and same with Storm Woods. Um, this week, I would start Teron Ward because I'm a little worried about Storm's knee. But, I mean, let's play all three. I mean, Tron Ward, we can start him, then go with Storm Woods, and then after that, uh, go Agnew. So, all three. Let's not forget about Tyler Anderson, the fullback. You got yeah. rushing yards from Brandon Cooks and Marcus Wheaton on those end rounds. There's mm -hmm. lots of seven depth. Beaver players that have rushed for over 10 yards this season. Lots so. of depth. No, you said running, by committee. I mean, we've got a lot of guys. Uh, I'm just going to have to say Storm Woods is a starter because he won the job and he's healthy now. I think Agnew's going to get minutes. I think Teron Ward's going to get minutes. And you got three good guys running the ball. That's hard to defend against. 
but uh, I don't think there's a controversy. It's really just about preference and who's playing better that time, you know. But I think I really do think Storm's going to get the start. And also, also, it's you know, it's way different than when you have a quarterback controversy because you do see running back by committee on almost every team now exactly. at both levels of football. All right, so let's talk about a different controversy. Move to quarterbacks, as we mentioned. Um, I know we've talked about this in past shows and everything with Cody Vaz. You know, when when Sean got hurt, coming back from surgery, those different. Um, those different controversies, but what does this mean? Cody Vaz is starting this weekend against Stanford. What does this mean for the rest of the season, potentially next year? What do you guys think this is really leading to? I mean, is Mike Riley making the right decisions? Is he not? What do you think the fans are going to think? Let's talk about all of that. I, I, I think he's making the right on. decision. Uh, Cody Vaz, 3-0 and as a starter, completing 56% 50, of his throws, seven touchdowns and only one interception. And that one interception came at the end when, you know, just may have been a bad read, may have been a bad – receiver run, route or whatever, but just that one pick, I think that's important. You know, I think next year it's really going to be open. Um, whoever's playing better at the time, who's practicing better, it's going to make both guys better. The pressure, I think, is going to make both players better. It's, it's tougher with a quarterback controversy than a running back, but you got two good guys that can play well, I think that's good for your team. What well, you Jacob? I mean, Vaz is a starter for Stanford. I mean, looking past next year, I don't even want to worry about next year. Let's mm -hmm. just worry about this year, Absolutely. this game against Stanford. Cody Vaz is our starter. I mean, it's getting late in the season. We're going to need to pick one quarterback. We obviously did with uh, Cody Vaz. So let's stick towards him and uh, just in Vaz we trust, I guess. Yeah, well, for the first time in a while, I think all of us are in agreement here. I think Mike Riley should come out on Monday following this game and announce Vaz as the starter of the rest of the season and say, no doubt this guy's going to start every game because then he's not idea. playing with a short leash. And I know it's, it's sad for Mannion because he came out and he played so well and he put up, you know, almost Heisman hopeful numbers at the start of the season. But you got to think about the now, like you said. And as a Beaver fan, as a Beaver student, yeah, I can say, oh, man, this Vaz thing totally messes things up for next season because Mannion could be so good next season. But wouldn't you rather win now? Beavers right now have a shot at the Rose Bowl. That hasn't happened in so long. we got to take what we can get now. As a Beaver fan, you got to say, listen, we're winning with Vaz. we got a shot at the Rose Bowl with Vaz. Let's go for it. You can't worry about the future. Not to mention, I'm going to graduate, so, you know, <laughs> I want to see it this year. Uh, people might say be, re be reluctant to start Mannion because of his – his numbers early in the season because he's going to be an NFL prospect. He's the prototypical NFL quarterback. But we're winning with Baz. you got to stick with it. I think I, – I don't know. I want, I want us to go to the Rose Bowl. What do you guys think? Oh, come on. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm, to trying to, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to go question. down to California But you think he January, should come out so. and say Vaz is the start of the whole year? Yeah, yes. I think he should just do it. I mean, I that agree. gives Vaz more confidence and that erases questions. But you like the pressure. You think the pressure is well, good Well, I mean, look what team. he did. He, he, he told Sean he's going to start. Personality-wise, I mean, start, you've worked with Cody came in at the end. You know, what if Cody would have started the half instead of the fourth quarter? The game, game could have been different. We might have won that game. Probably would have won. You know, it's just, I think it's the toughest choice to, to make as a head coach. Quarterback is so different from running back, you know. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. one player playing the whole time. And if you tell Cody he's going to be the star for the rest of the year, you know, what happens to Sean? You make, yeah, yeah. you do make a good point there. You're and right, and like right. you said, I mean, football is a team sport, but, and you know this, no position dictates what happens on the field like the quarterback. Every single play, he has to touch the ball. So. And just letting like your whole offense knows, like you're the quarterback. They know who it's going to be that, every that week. It's mm -hmm. a good point. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, as always, we're going to end the show with the Pac-12 picks. Um, let's switch it up a little, though. I want to I want to chit chat about our Pac-12 picks this week. So, cool. Jacob, why don't we start with you? You'll just say the game, say your opinion, and we'll go down the line. Okay. So, go ahead, take it away. Well, first game is Colorado at Arizona. I promised myself I'd never pick Colorado, so I'm going to stick towards Arizona. <laughs> it's my only explanation. Well, that's a smart move. you got to go with U of A. Yes, they got blown out, blown out of the water Jeez. by UCLA. Kind of embarrassing, to be honest, after upsetting USC the previous week. But it's, it's Colorado, so yeah, Wildcats. I, 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 that's all you got to say. Arizona, I mean, Colorado is just absolutely terrible this year. Uh, Wildcats are going to win big. Colorado gets no love. As they should not. <laughs> <laughs> deserving, game? deserving. The next game, we got Arizona State at USC. I think USC is going to show up angry in this game. I mean, they just lost or to Oregon. Played well in offense. Defense couldn't stop Oregon. That was a crazy game. Except no one can stop Oregon right now. Yeah. Except Oregon State. Call right. it now. Oh. <laughs> and I'm going to say Future USC prediction. is going to win big. Okay, you know, ASU actually, they looked really good last week when they played Oregon State. And they're a good team. They're a potent offense. But USC also looked pretty good against the Ducks. And L.A. sports fans are so funny because they're calling for the firing of Lane Kiffin. They're up in arms. They're so disappointed. It's like, hey, you only have three losses. You know, pretty much anywhere else fans would be stoked on that. But I still think SC is a good football team, and I think they bounced back after their close loss. I think they beat the Sun Devils. Yeah, I mean, they thrashed Oregon secondary. I think they're going to do the same thing, and uh, they're going to win big. All right. 
Next game is Utah at Washington. Uh, we couldn't beat Washington at Central League Field, and I don't think uh, Utah's either. So I'm going to go Washington. Keith Price is playing well lately, and uh, Washington's emergence in the second half has been incredible. I'm so. still not. I'm still not over that game. I'm not either. I still wish we won. Well, anyway, U Utah is another team that's emerged <laughs> in the second half of the season, and their defense has been playing really well. And they played the Beavers tough, but also Washington's a young team, a team that plays good at home. Terrible on the road. The game's at home. I'm going with the Huskies. Yep. Uh, they play great at C-Link. Uh, Washington's a good home team and uh, got a couple wins. I think they're strong. I think they're going to win the game. All right. Next game is UCLA at Washington State. I like UCLA in this one. I mean, now they're at top of the South Division, and uh, they can go all the way to the Pac-12 championship. They're headed to UCLA. So, I mean, excuse me, USC. So if they win out, they're in the Pac-12 championship. So yep. they're riding high. Yeah, no, I really like what UCLA's done in the second half of the season. Their blowout win against the Wildcats last week was huge. That's a statement game for them. Right now, they're my favorite team coming out of the Pac-12 South, and they're playing Washington State, whose best player, Marquise Wilson, just quit the team. Mike Leach is just really angering all his players. It's just not a great way to start off your first year as head coach with Mike Leach there. So nope. regardless <laughs> of who they were playing, unless it was Colorado, I was going to pick anybody against the Cougs. I'm picking UCLA. No, you said it. Uh, he's even coming out and calling out his own players. I mean, it's just going downhill for him. Uh, yeah. Washington State's not going to win this one, UCLA. All right, all right. Oregon at California is the last game. Um, Cal. Wow. Yeah, uh, Jeff Tedford, he's on his last legs. He's got <laughs> – if he's not fired by the end of the season, I guess Cal doesn't want to win football games. Ducks are going to win this one. It's another one I hate to say, but Ducks are going to win big. I think so. So we've got we've got a, a lot of agreement bit of, here, but there's also a lot of games that are like obvious choices. You know, yeah. you're yeah. not going to pick the Cal Bears. I don't care if it's at home. I don't care what. Nope. If it's just did though. Yeah, I'm going out on a limb. What? Yeah, yeah he, just just, he just. I guess I. Oh my gosh. I have no <laughs> explanation why possible. I picked it. No, I just. I honestly. <laughs> but I'm picking Cal. You have no explanation. Like, I have no explanation. Hey, well, you know what? That's how that's how the points have differed this this. Well, I'm just glad to get a point on that. I'm trying to catch up, so. I think it's more of a hope thing, you know. Yeah, that's all right. I like that. Roll them to win by picking them. I like that. So speaking of points, do you have them on your notes? Uh, where are we at right now? I know Jack was down. I do. A little while. Crawford's at 12, I'm at 10, and Jack is at 9. So we're Ooh, all close. We're not, we're not really that far apart like I thought. I thought you were down. I thought you still had like 6 or 7. Well, or... I caught up a little bit, and I'm going to catch up to Noakes after that pick. But Ooh. So hopefully. All right. All right. Well, um, well we still got to pick our player of the game, and who wins oh, Oregon State? We do. We, we, have, we, do. we have one game to talk about left. Exactly. So Start Oregon off. State all right. and Stanford. Well, my key Let's to the game it. is putting pressure on freshman quarterback Kevin Hogan. He took over for Josh Nunez about two weeks ago. He looked very good against Colorado, but uh, he hasn't faced <coughs> Colorado, like Oregon State. <laughs> exactly. And so I'm going to say the defensive line needs to step up. He's a running quarterback, uh, so we got to watch that. But who's better to stop the job than Scott Crichton? I picked him before, and I'm going to continue to go with him. Scott Crichton's my key player to the game, and uh, OSU is going to win 24 to 17 in Palo Alto. No, it's a, right. I like it. I like it. You know, OSU oftentimes struggles against the running quarterback, so I think this will be this will be a good test. But I do like our secondary's chances against a freshman. I like our secondary. You know, too. I'm talking about you know all you can eat buffet out there with Miss Throne Balls. <laughs> but my key to the game for Oregon State <laughs> is protecting Cody Vaz. They're coming up against the number one totally run D key. in the NCAA, also the sack leader in the NCAA. A very stout defense that the Cardinal bring. They're playing at home, so I got to go with the offensive line here for Oregon State. They got to protect them. Whoever's run blocking, whether it be Teron Ward, Storm Woods, or Malcolm Agnew, I think we're going to see a lot of I formation with Tyler Anderson in there at fullback. Oh, I see bringing so, out the I form. Yeah, I, like I think it, we're going to need to against this heavy <laughs> pass rush, this heavy you know run defense. I think that the offensive line, this is huge for them. But they got a great test last week against Arizona State, who also has who's number two in the Pac-12 in sacks behind Stanford. You know, I got to break in for a second and look at how much that affected our game this past weekend, though. You know, sure. you, there were so many plays that we lost on that we, you know, that could have been the game could have been totally different if half of those weren't there. Oh yeah, Cody Vaz negative 70 yards rushing because of it yes. because Crazy. of the sacks. So Crazy. you don't see that kind of stuff. We need, no. we need our offensive. So I'm got to go with the offensive line as the player of the game. I think Oregon State wins 17-14. 17-14, all right? All right, well, I hate that I'm saying this, but I really think that Stanford's going to pull this one off. Um, my pick is 20-14 to 14 Stanford. Um, and I'm not saying that we're not going to play well. I think Cody Vaz is the key to the game. If he doesn't throw any picks, then we're going we're gonna to play really well. But we're going up against the number one rushing defense in the entire nation. I think we have to run the ball well, just like Alex said. 
I just think they're really – 55 yards a game Stanford's letting up. It's crazy. We're, we're fifth, and we're letting up 90, so – I, I just have to say Stanford. But at the right. time, BYU was like the number three rush defense. That's and true. We tore them apart. That's so. true. No, it's good. I think I think Cody Vaz is a good key to the game because, like I said, they're also the sack leader in the nation. So him getting protected and him having time to throw and he takes too many hits. I think we might see Sean Mann. Exactly. But it's, happen. it's not a bad backup hey, to have. I think that if we handle all of your key points of the game, then we'll be all right. Well, hey, How's I think, <laughs> can't disagree with that. <laughs> all right. Well, do you want to uh, tell everybody about the radio show so they can tune in? Oh, absolutely. Weekend? Tune in on uh, Friday from 2 to 4 on 88.7 KBVR-FM or online at kbvr.com for Against the Spread Sports Talk Radio. Be coming at you with all kinds of beaver sports as well as national stories. Right. Don't forget to pick up the barometer. Alex Crawford has some articles in oh, there yeah, this every Friday's other day. Big basketball issue this Friday. Big basketball preview. So yeah, good. I'm so stoked for basketball season. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Well, that's all we have for you tonight, but make sure you tune in next week for another round of the Beaver Roundtable and another episode of the Beaver Sports Show. Thanks.